is always a huge amount of anticipation in the act of opening a box and letting an object reveal itself. And I can only imagine Sir Joseph Hotung's emotion when he was confronted with these masterworks for the very first time. Is that quiet power, that elegance, that is what ties in all the pieces in the collection of Sir Joseph. There is this inner vitality and sense of dignity that flows out of each and every object. Now let's travel back through time with five masterpieces that capture the creative genius of the Chinese artist through the millennia. We begin our journey around 2,000 years ago with one of Sir Joseph's favorite objects. It's this bronze chimera which dates to the Han Dynasty. This type of beast is known as a bixie, which means to avert evil spirits. It is full of tension and you almost expect it to pounce at any moment. Once upon a time, the piece would have been fitted, perhaps with a lamp to light up the room of a palace, or it might have been part of a stand to hold up a screen to create a sense of intimacy. This sculpture, a truly universal masterwork, has only ever lived in the grandest homes since being unearthed after almost 2,000 years. Sir Joseph's bestiary includes another great sculpture, this time carved out of stone more than half a millennium later at the peak of the Tang Dynasty. This powerfully modeled lion captures the boldness and vitality typical of the period. The energy of the sculpture comes from the slight asymmetry in the pose, from the rippling muscles and the ferocity in the expression of the beast. Whether the piece once stood at the entrance of a mausoleum or a temple, it is hard to say. But either way, it would have been there to guard the deceased or the deity. Here we're transported over half a millennium later into the clear waters of a lake teeming with fish with this superb blue and white porcelain jar. There is something incredibly serene about this scene of four fish floating through water plants. That near electric blue brings it to life. In Taoist thought, fish were a manifestation of spiritual freedom and the design may have taken on a very subtle political message among literati painters that were loyal to the deposed Song Dynasty. One only seldom finds great Yuan blue and white porcelain in private collections. This superb large carved cinnabar lacquer box carved with peonies, one of China's most iconic flowers, dates to the Yongle reign in the early Ming Dynasty, half a century later. With a lush floral design, from building the base of the box to completing the carving, it would have taken well over a year to produce. This powerful work of ours is a stunning example of the largest and finest type known with most comparable examples in museum collections. The last stop on our journey is this exceptional horseshoe back armchair. Carved out of precious Huanghuali rosewood 200 years later, towards the end of the Ming Dynasty. Paintings and prints from the Song Dynasty onwards give us a very clear idea of the high status such folding horseshoe back armchairs enjoyed. And in fact, you can see such a chair even used as a throne in a painting by Giuseppe Castiglioni, depicting Emperor Qianlong receiving tribute from Kazakh envoys. The chair is here used to convey imperial power. Because these chairs were designed to be folded, they were more prone to damage and they are therefore incredibly rare and very sought after. These five works of art, life enhancing in their beauty and power, are as much a testament to Chinese art as they are to Sir Joseph Hotung's eye and character.